Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from sortofinteresting.com and today you're joining me on board good old narrowboat Abel's Ark but not for long as we're going to head out on a bike ride and this is going to be slightly different to my previous cycling videos where I'm just riding around and it's all shot from a GoPro instead after people that seem to enjoy my recent walk video where I actually did no, over, uh, no voiceover and it was all actually talking and commentary as I was out walking I thought we'll try something like that where I'll have some GoPro footage as we're travelling around the back lanes and the countryside of Shropshire and then I'll stop and film on my phone a few little pieces that are actually recorded and spoken about as I'm filming it. So we'll see how that works but anyway let's get out there it's a beautiful day middle of the heat wave that's still ongoing in the UK well all that remains is for us to change our hats and get stuck in. Before we set out let's just once again take a moment to pan the camera around the marina here at Ellesmere. Absolutely beautiful and again as I've said so many times so much more peaceful than I'd first feared that being in a marina would turn out to be. But as you can hear and I've heard many times in these videos recently I'm the loudest one here with me big mouth. <laughs> So the first thing we're going to do on this bike ride is an epic bit of downhill bike riding here. Whoa, hold on tight, my friends. Whew, that was a bit too much drama for me. <laughs> um, right, oh, the comedy's not going to get any better than that in this video, I'm afraid. Tune out now if you've got any sense. So I thought we'd start with an immediate left turn as we cross over the canal bridge there. And this is a road that takes us past the back of Ellesmere College. And I was hoping it would lead us to two separate locations. The first we're going to see in just a few seconds, which is a lovely little area, just a little corner of Shropshire that I discovered almost completely by accident when I was biking to and from Narrowboat Tilly down at Wixell in the old days. And well, here we are. OK, then. So stop number one on our little tour of the local villages is Lee. And as you can see, we've got horses in the field over there behind the old brick wall. If we zoom out, we've got a diversion sign, so I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. But if we pan around here, this is what I love. I've always loved this little spot. I've got photos from years ago when I used to cycle past, going to and from Narrowboat Tilly, moored up there down at Wixell. As you can see again, beautiful sunny day, as mentioned. Classic country lane. And then we've got not only proper old red telephone box, not only a little rural post box, but we've also got this absolutely fantastic old building here, Look at that timber frame all bowed out. I've always loved this particular, I mean what an amazing building, I'll see if I can lighten it up a little bit just so you can see a bit more detail on the wood there. Absolutely awesome, fair play, absolutely love it. Oh, I've got a car coming, so I should probably step away from the roads I'm doing these. So, so just for general purposes, of course, we are indeed a proper fully working phone box out here. Although, looking at the cobwebs above, I wouldn't want to be on the phone too long. I've got to say, I'm quite surprised at how windy it is. Anyway, here's 10 seconds of peace. Absolutely beautiful countryside that we're cutting through here. Right, that's surely enough peace and quiet for one video, let's get stuck in again. So, after a very short bike ride down from uh, Lee and that lovely bit of uh, countryside scenery there, we then find this beautiful building, which again, I'm going to immediately just hand straight over to myself on location. Right, my friends, I'm very glad that I managed to choose the correct road to come down, as I wanted this little building to be in this video. This is an absolutely fascinating little chapel. This is the Lee Bridges Methodist Chapel. And as you can see, again, we're out in this absolutely incredible rural area. There's hardly any houses dotted around, but obviously once upon a time, there's a congregation, sorry, big enough to warrant the construction of this. But what I love about this building, and you see a couple of them, there's one down by Maysbury where the canal, the Montgomery Canal cuts down towards Welshpool. But you can see it's this um, strange corrugated, I don't know if it's steel or what material, 
but it's just a fascinating construction I thought. Here we go, this is a much better view to just generally see the construction and the curiosity of just such a small building. Absolutely fascinating. I love the fact that it's painted this sort of browny red colour as well. As it's, again, it makes it more unusual again on top of the unusual construction of it. And literally it's surrounded by these crop fields as you can see. Lovely stuff. So back on the bike again, we're travelling now through Lower Hordley, which is another one of these really small rural villages, just a gathering of a few houses amidst the incredible amount of fields and countryside out here. You can see there, it looks like there's a leak in a pipe beneath the road there at the junction. Just a random, <laughs> totally uninteresting note there. So as you can see, Lee and Hordley and Lower Hordley, where we are now, they're all very small places just hidden away amongst the fields. But Lower Hordley has a very good distinguishing feature that you can tell from miles away where you are or where you're looking at, I suppose. And that is this rather handy beacon. Yes, just like Tetchel, which is another very tiny little village out here, um, it's got its own wind turbine which when you're looking from, say, a 3,000-year-old Iron Age hill fort in my hometown of Oswestry, you can see these as little markers on the landscape for miles around, which is a very handy uh, little way to tell where different places are, especially if you've got a pair of binoculars or a decent telescope with you. Fascinating little insights into the countryside. Right, so we've got another totally random rural stop here. We're not anywhere in particular other than by this absolutely great sign that's got so many of the local rural villages all in one spot. So the road you've just come from, we've got Western Lulling Fields. I know it's very difficult to get this on this camera with the uh, extraordinarily bright sky in the background. So we've got Western Lulling Fields and Bastridge, which would have been on the left in our last uh, destination. Lower Hordley, where we've just come from, and Bagley. But where we actually set out from of Ellesmere is on this sign which would point us down this direction and take us on a big, well, not necessarily a big, but a nice little uh, rural loop and lead us back down the lanes to Ellesmere, as well, well, via Hordley and Tetchel, basically. I'm not sure if I might want to go that way, you know. That might be the way we want to go instead of uh, straight up to Queen's Head and also straight down that direction. Um, I'll have to consult a map. That's something I didn't think about. Um, yeah, right. Anyway, what am I doing having this discussion on air with you all? Let's get stuck into some more biking. I love little places like this. Can't say I've ever noticed this little track off the road here before until obviously during this bike ride where I'm looking out for places to stop and film. And you start to look at it and you think, where on earth is this leading to it? Obviously in some sort of use that stopped it all getting too overcrowded and overgrown. It's a proper decent sort of cement base and yet it looks like, well, there's nowhere at all at the end of it. And I know that the Montgomery Canal cuts down across there over the hill behind that tree somewhere. So I wouldn't really like to say what exactly this leads to. And unfortunately, under this sun, I don't think today's going to be the day that I'm going to start wandering down random tracks. Plus the fact it is uh, actually chained up, so of course I would never dream of hopping a fence and wandering off. Just want to make that quite clear. <laughs> After a very short bike ride again, we are about to come to somewhere that you're going to learn has got an awful lot of nostalgic memories for me. This is Rednall that we're approaching, or at least the junction at Rednall, not really where the exciting stuff is, I suppose, to a certain extent. But, well... I suppose, yet again, I'm going to hand straight over to me on location. Okay, so this really is a classic childhood site. We're at Red Null now. The Red Null Activity Centre is where me and my friends went paintballing on the last day ever of school. There was an official trip, which was, I think, to Waterworld or somewhere like that, but we uh, fancied something a bit more hands-on, so had our unofficial last day of school trip off over at Red Null paintballing. But then, in years long gone, me and my dad have been down here fishing in days gone by. My goodness me, it's weird. I've got such faint little memories and being down at the Franklin Locks and stuff like that with my dad fishing as well, which isn't too far from here. But 
just the middle of the countryside as always with these bike rides and walks and boat trips absolutely wonderful if you're wondering what all the heavy vehicles in the background are we're also by the Red Mill Industrial Estate a very strange rural just uh, industrial estate indeed well my friends this is absolutely unbelievable nostalgia that I'm getting right now you've got a heron right on the opposite side of the pool there if I zoom out this is literally the exact spot I can remember being here with my dad sat up on the side it wasn't quite so overgrown back then and literally fishing off in there but more to the point if I pan the camera around here I've got such strong memories of having the little catapult to fire maggots out into the water and putting stones in it and of course as I was only young I couldn't get much power into a catapult but catapulting up and down this and the tree oh man it's such a massive nostalgic hit right now right? it's one of those moments where you almost just want to sit down and just think about it for a while amazing absolutely amazing let's see Heron's looking pretty calm and relaxed over there did start to shift around just before so I thought he might give us a show and take off right in front of us no such luck what an absolutely perfect bit of timing that was friends to have a boat coming down towards us we're at the top of the mile straight from Queen's Head towards Rednall and I've loved I've always loved this little stretch of canal you've got the railway bridge in the background there but this fascinating timber frame and brick uh, building here the narrowness of the canal that I've scraped hilly down both sides of there many many times then you've got like the old sweeping curves of the brickwork here humble little bicycle then on the other side almost the exact opposite not a single building in sight and just a mile of in the summer months as you can tell extremely overgrown very shallow and muddy narrow canal fantastic although admittedly when i was on narrowboat tilly and she had engine trouble didn't make for the calmest of air rides as you can imagine if you had an overheating engine on this i wouldn't fancy trying to walk the boat too far down with well that to deal with one side and that to deal with the other side right I'm probably getting sunburnt again on top of last week's uh, misadventure so I better start moving so we're now pedalling our way down the mile straight and this whole section of canal is somewhere that even though it's not uh, there's nothing nearby in any real sense of oh it's not like Ellesmere or Chirk where you can walk for a few minutes and have proper shops and stuff because it's only about 20 minute cycle ride away from Oswestry which is obviously handy for me to get to work and family and friends and all the rest of it it's somewhere that I've spent a lot of time moored up just below the lock that we're about to see in any moment now basically just wanted to throw these clips in of this very bumpy track where I've got to admit it's times like this and when I'm going to be moored up down here in the future I'll be thinking to myself hmm maybe getting a road bike with these rock hard very thin tyres wasn't the best choice of a bicycle I could have made anyway let's have a look right then my friends we are at Aston Lock number one or as you've probably heard me call it in the past the top lock at Queen's Head I'm not going to go right down the canal in uh, this particular ride as I think that our route into Oswestry Street down there would be cut off um, as I did this ride probably out four weeks or so ago and amazingly managed to add miles onto the trip when I thought I was about a mile and a half away from Oswestry. Street so in this heat and this weather I don't want to risk that so we're going to head back up this road in a second I just really wanted to come and have a, have a nose down at the lock so it's one of the first locks that I ever did on my own in fact but um, yeah as you can see again the sun behind us now looking up absolutely fantastic day to be out and about right then I suppose should do a bit more pedalling but before we do a bit more pedalling I thought I'd better just actually show you the other side of the lock and if we zoom in here on this workboat that is pretty much the spot that I used to moor up narrowboat Tilly and here I just want to throw in this little clip as I decided to for no other reason than to show you on film uh, travel just down underneath this little bridge here 
This is a bridge that I know, I can't think who it was, years ago, somebody commented about how it looks like a nice bridge with all the brickwork as you approach. But because it's a modern bridge, as soon as you're underneath there, you can see it's all concrete slabs and stuff. I suppose it's more of a short tunnel than a bridge, this one. It's only got a relatively normal two-way road on it. But I just wanted to throw this clip in again, just show you some of the scenes on the canal. This is where the, oh, I'm not sure if it's Queen's Head Boat Club kayaking club something like that please forgive me if you're a member i don't know off the top of my head i can't think um but they play uh water polo and stuff or kayak polo whatever you would call it and uh, some sort of i suppose almost like a, a water basketball game where when i boated through on narrowboat tilly through that exact area by the big warehouse there uh, they had all had to go over to the side and knock the nets that were hanging on strings and wires over the canal out of the way so I could boat through, which made me feel a little bit guilty. So here you're seeing the, the worst part of this uh, bike route, where for about five minutes or so, you bike down this path here, um, uh, well, right next to the main bypass road. This is a road that leads from Oswestry out to, ooh, I'd say you could go to Shrewsbury that way, and obviously the little villages and stuff along the way, but there's a new road out to Shrewsbury, so that's of probably no interest whatsoever to most of you out there in the world, I imagine. Um, and now we are finally on the home straight here. This is Aston Square that we are now turning down to pass by Middleton Pool, which is no distance at all out from Oswestry. Street. And then we're going to cut up and end this video as we enter into the first few houses of Oswestry. Street. Not enter literally physically into the houses and cycle all up the stairs and out through the windows or anything mad like that. That made it sound like far more exciting and interesting of a finale to this video. But this is where if you saw my, uh, I think it was called Boaty, Booty and Turtley bonus video the other day when I did a walk cutting across the fields and walking down the canal. Uh, from the marina at Ellesmere into Oswestry. Street. This is where we ended the video to on this section past Middleton Pool. And well, I'd just like to say once again, thank you so much for tuning into this video. I hope you've enjoyed a look at some of the places that surround the canal and just some of the general places that I've enjoyed going to and cycling to and walking to over the years. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for joining me. And as always, if you're interested, please do consider checking out my short books about life on Narrowboat Tilly. I'm working on a new book about life on Abel's Ark, so please do stay tuned for that. Visit narrowboatbooks.com, that'll take you straight to my Amazon page, or check the links in the description. Feel free to add me on Facebook and Twitter and all that sort of stuff as well if you'd like. And of course, feel free to subscribe and check out all of my other countryside and narrowboat life videos. Until the next time, my friends, have an absolutely fantastic day. Keep it interesting, keep it boatworthy, and of course, my friends, farewell.